Hi again, uh, and welcome to another not fun at all uh, Houdini tutorial. Um, this time I'm gonna conclude this utility series finally after a year that I started it. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to create some custom paths and how to install some plugins and stuff. Um, Houdini can be super annoying and super not friendly in that regard. Um, Houdini can be super non-friendly in general, so let's get started. So while this is a very simple thing, Houdini can make it over complicated. And what do I mean by that? If I'm on Cinema 4D and go to preference, preferences in the files here, uh, this is where I save my autosave files, my backup stuff. So I'm using an external drive called D and I'm using a very specific folder structure. And wherever my Cinema 4D files are, the backup files and autosaves always go there. Also, uh, in XParticles, same in the XParticles caching system, uh, all of my files go to that hard drive. So I have a hard drive for caching and other hard drive than my set drive. I don't cache next to my files, etc. And I want to see how to do something similar now in Houdini. In Houdini, this is way too complicated and way too stupid. Some, somebody will argue with, you with me, but as I come from all the software in my life that I was going to preferences and define the global cache folder or a global autosave folder, these things in Houdini can be super stupid and super putting off for new users. For old users, I mean, we, you have to remember things that you shouldn't remember. Anyways, I don't know what the point is, but let me show you how we're going to fix it. So let me go to my desktop and I have this file here which is called all my caches and I want to do exactly the same whatever I cache to always go to this folder via a token for instance okay so how are we gonna do that in our uh, documents in our Houdini version there are all the files that hold all the settings and one file that you would probably need sometimes to define various settings is this one that is called Houdini uh, ENV. It's called the environment file. Yes, you shared it well. We need to go in here and start write a few things. So let's say, um, so by default, your Houdini file will have, environment file will have this text and whenever you have this uh, symbol, it, it means that it doesn't read the code, but whenever you start adding things, as I've added here, these two lines that I found online, doesn't matter what they do, uh, Houdini then, next time it will open, it will start loading whatever uh, we ask it to do from this file. Really stupid, right? I know. So let's say I want to define a, glow, uh, a caching location. Okay, so let's call this cache, right? And let's say this cache calls this this cache equals and we put these two brackets and in the brackets let's go to uh, this file right so give me a second so this file right here right click and copy the address of it okay and let's go to the uh, the environment file here and paste the address so here we define the name of our token that we're gonna use inside Houdini. And here we define the path. And there's one more thing to do. We need to take those slashes and turn them around like this. And yes, let's, so the name, the name can be anything. This can be called Thanos Cassis or whatever, but let's call it uh, Cassis, whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, press save on this file. And I'm going to close my, my Houdini file and open it again. And you see, indeed, how stupid, how stupid that was uh, for me to define this, uh, this location, right? It was overly, overly complex. So let me go and open my file again, this test scene that I have. It's, uh, let's see, here's on the desktop. So let's go now to the, uh, and add a file cache, all right? And let's set this to explicit. And now this will all make sense. So what we said in the, <laughs> in this environment file, it simply be, can be described by this token file, caches, okay? So now Houdini understands that this is a global location. Yes, 
great, not great. So let's do hip uh, name, sorry, hip name. So this will create an alembic called dot abc and let's do a single frame. Okay, so in this file cast now, if I press save to disk, it didn't give me any error. And you see, if I go now to this folder, that's, I, I, I have this file. So from now on, uh, whenever I refer to Houdini to this with this uh, token, it understands that this token is pointing to that folder, right? So this is how we can define our custom paths in, uh, in Houdini. One extra note here, uh, if I'm here now in Houdini, so you see how stupid this software can be sometimes. If I press open, there is no way to have this cas folder as a shortcut. Even if I find it here and press this icon, it will give me again a wrong, it won't, it won't read it as, as, as like this, okay? So I don't know how to uh, rename it or... Anyways, I don't know. So in order to, to work th with that... Uh, to have this as, as an external location as well. If I go now again to the to the preferences, there is another file that is called jump. And if I open this jump file, uh, I need to type the following. This sign, the name of what we defined, cases, and this slash. So now, whatever I said to the jump file, let me save it. If I try to open here, and it's not here yet, it's like I said, Add me here a custom shortcut to this location. Okay, <laughs> I know, I know guys, I know. Believe me, I love Houdini, but this is, this is like, they need to fix those things. This is inexcusable in 2022 for a new user to go to Houdini. And, and when I first asked how we can install a plugin, people were telling me about, uh, how to say, about packages and environments. And I was like, what the fuck are you on about? I need an exe file to run. So you see now that I can open a file, now it gives me this location. So environment file and jump file define you some global locations in the hard drive and then some shortcuts here for those global locations. To continue this ugliness, uh, how can we install now plugins in uh, Houdini? Well, the old way is to go again to your environment file and add some paths and some stuff here, which uh, is not preferable uh, these days, so I'm not going to show you. The other method, though, is to use what it's called packages. So let's say you download Octane and um, there's no exe, whatever. So you unzip all the files and let me show you where I have this unzipped. So on my PC, on my disk drive here, I have a plugin specifically for Houdini, an external drive. And here I have a folder called Octane and inside, he inside here is the contents of Octane. So let's copy this path, right? Let's say, uh, sorry, let's go here and right click and say copy address as before. And probably here you, would, you, you won't have this packages folder. So go and create one, right? The weirdness starts already. Let's create a packages folder. Why? Because we want to install Octane. And inside here, I already have uh, this JSON file, which uh, Octane provides to us. So every plugin developer provides us now with those JSON files, but we need to go inside and adjust them. Hi, <laughs> hi, so, uh, hello darkness, my friend, and all of those things, you know. So as you see here, this is way worse <laughs> than the environment file. It has a lot of crappy things and um, Honestly, what we need to pay attention to those packaging files is usually they, they say a lot of things, but the most important thing that they say is, uh, you see those two slashes? It means that uh, whatever this line writes is not taking account into code. So probably this is a note from the developer. And underneath this line, it has this predefined sheet. And as you see here, probably this will have something something else here, let me delete this. Okay, so probably this is the place where you need to go and paste your path and go again and turn those backslashes around. Great. 
So this is how you can install plugins with those packages files. And again, if you made everything correct, whenever you open Houdini app, uh, it will just, you know, uh, have the plugin show. So I won't save it right now. So this is my Octane file. Uh, this is my mops file. It's way simpler JSON file. So packages are JSON files, right? Uh, this is a different format than the environment file, but this is how you, uh, how you will probably install a plugin these days. So the mops file is simpler. It has less mambo jumbo. And, but again, you see the format is similar. It has this variable or something called mops. And here you define your path. Let's examine another one, the mops plus. It has some other lines here, but again, the thing is, again, you go here and define your path. So one final thing uh, for more experienced users with the packages files and environment, um, you can skip completely the environment file uh, settings uh, about global locations, and you can probably define everything now inside a package file. So as you see, I have this uh, created a packaging file myself called Motion Punk. This is not how to install a plugin, but if I open it, you see that I'm defining here some locations on my hard drive. And in these locations, I define, for instance, a cache location. So you, you realize the format now, I think. Uh, we define here a, a code name for what we want, so caches. And this is the location of the caches. This is MP, Motion Punk. This is the location for Motion Punk. You can define textures, you can define VDBs, whatever, whatever. So you can define your paths like this, and then you can have... Uh, so for instance, this line is a little different. It has a, a, this thing that it's called Houdini path. I haven't defined that. It's, it's a known variable for those files that says, look at... Uh, this location and this is this is the location that i defined above right so this is the whole location so this is the syntax of the last sentence and this last sentence says that go to this location and look at my settings as well because in this location i don't have just my plugins i have also my desktop settings in houdini the you know ui settings i have the tools i have the node presets i have everything in this external drive and whenever Houdini loads up, it won't look on the documents anymore. It will look on this location for those settings, or it will look in both places, doesn't matter. But long story short, whenever I format my computer, I just take this, this uh, file, my custom packaging file, I throw it inside packages in Houdini, and boom, all of my settings just load in every Houdini version. I don't have to go and do all of the, you know, find my nodes, where does this go, and place this and that there. No, I just have a packaging file that controls of my settings. Um, sorry, this is too much information probably, but I had to uh, show you uh, how, keep a screenshot of that actually, how I uh, set up my Houdini after its installation, because it's super important. I don't even remember all this, and that's why I do a video for that, so I reference it myself in the future. And one last thing, very, very last thing, if you find those, uh, uh, how to say, those files weird, there is this application called, called Visual Code Studio, right? And uh, in this Visual Code Studio, you can just go and uh, let's open this JSON file, right? It gives us a much more clear uh, way of the coding you see you have the curly brackets that are yellow it gives us some color coding and it's much easier to read uh, our files i mean from doing motion design we ended up opening some visual studio code file in order to install a plugin and define some custom locations yeah it is what it is i hope in, in newer versions of houdini these things uh, would be much much simpler Maybe they are and I don't know them, but I figured that the most robust way of doing these things after asking around a lot of people uh, this one year and something that I'm in Houdini myself, I found that this is the way to do things. So um, in the next tutorial, I'm, we're going to do more playful stuff, I promise. Enough with those utilities. It, I think there are, all of the basics are out of the way, so uh, stay tuned for more fun stuff. Ciao.